Coming up on Sophisticated Mom. Boy. My mother thought I was a complete whack job. She was like, this boy called you an N-word and he spit in your face. And I remember specifically what I told to my mother was that he didn't have anybody to love him. Because, I, and I can't remember when he was talking about his foster mom, but whatever he said, that's exactly what I got. And I just remember feeling sorry for him. I knew that he was just a broken child and that he wanted to break somebody else because that's what broken people do because somebody once broke them. <laughs> Dedication, preservation, take a look inside. Your salvation, do every good word. It takes patience, like a butterfly. Sophia here and I'm back with another video. If you are new to my channel, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated on all of my videos. And don't forget to check the description box because I always put a lot of stuff in there, including my Patreon where I talk about all things leveling up. Now, what I'm going to be talking about today is breaking a child's spirit. I'm all for discipline and this is just not even discipline. This is just like your actions, your words, calling a child stupid, the way that you're treating them, emotionally abusing them, taking your anger out on them because you're having a bad day, because you don't want them, because you and the father broke up, because they remind you of the father, because of a number of reasons that don't have anything to do with them and a whole bunch of adults I have increasingly known is keep excusing their nonsense for taking it out on the children and you keep believing that it is okay and I actually have a video on this because somebody asked me this question where she was saying that she resented her daughter and I did kind of get a little rash in the video and honestly um she might unfollow me <laughs> and and but like I said in that video all of this is to help you I completely don't regret anything that I said um I give y'all the truth nothing but the truth because I do have several years of counseling experience with at-risk youth I was also a juvenile correctional officer and I understand to the core of my existence what it is to completely break a child's spirit and the aftermath of what can occur and how it can ruin their lives y'all and I feel Feel like sometimes when y'all are just acting out of I don't want to say y'all like everybody is doing it but even as single moms or even as parents or even as anybody who interacts with children are just doing things punishing excessively yelling being overly aggressive toxic motherhood abandoning their children if you're a dad beat dad whatever the case may be if you are doing that to your children we need to stop underestimating the effects that you have on your children and keep blaming blaming it on oh well, I don't like the mama that's why I don't see my child or well I don't like the dad that's why I take out the frustration on the child or I'm a single mom and it's hard and that's why I get mad at the child it's like okay but you a grown behind person and you be, need to be able to um control yourself because you know once your child is an adult you can't take that back and if the child is damaged or the child is emotionally damaged then you need to understand that a lot of that can fall on you and your lack of parenting and there's no taking that back i'm sorry and so i want to tell you guys a true story and this might get a little freaking random but i want you to rock with me okay so when i was in about the third grade um, and I was living in Hawaii because as um, I always say, my mother lived in the military. This white little boy called me the N-word and he hawked a loogie and he spit right here. I still remember this. He spit a loogie right here on my head. And I remember as I went like this, like it just went like, oh my gosh, in my face, right? <clears throat> so at this time, there was not a lot of black people in Hawaii, as I'm sure you can know. Like me and my other black friend, I remember looking at her. She leaped first and then I leaped and we both beat the brakes off of him. This is not the point of the story. The point of the story is that, I don't know if this was just God's discernment in the third grade, but I remember this is really the magnitude in which I realized that hurt people hurt people. So after, um, you know, cause we got in trouble cause we beat the mess out of this little boy. And so um, when I went back to school, I remember that the boy said, he was talking and I overheard him talk about his foster mom. And for whatever reason, and I cannot say why, and I can't even say if it would affect me now to this day, that this, I just felt like so much empathy for him. Like, and it wasn't even like, oh, empathy, but I mean like a sorrow in the deepness 
of my like soul. It was the weirdest thing. I can't even tell you. And I don't know if it was just like a God thing. I can't even tell you, but I'm going to continue on. So when I went home that day, because uh, my mother knew what happened, and this was like maybe a few days later, I told my mother that I wanted to be friends with this boy. My mother thought I was a complete whack job. She was like, this boy called you an N-word and he spit in your face. And I remember specifically what I told to my mother was that he didn't have anybody to love him because I and I can't remember when he was talking about his foster mom but whatever he said that's exactly what I got and I just remember feeling sorry for him and I don't want to say like that's an excuse for racism I don't want to like let's not go there but I'm saying in this particular situation he was the way he was because he was a broken child and so as I have now in the mental health field and I have worked with a, bro a lot of broken children, it's kind of like the, the rules of like for every reaction, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When you are a bad parent, when you are a neglectful parent, when you are a humiliating parent, when you are an abusive parent, when you sit and allow somebody to abuse you in front of your child, when you allow some like a boyfriend to abuse your child, your husband to abuse your child, whatever the case may be you are continuously breaking and hurting that child and you are breaking their spirit and that vault up emotion has to come out somewhere whether in the present or whether in the future and they are going to carry that with them and that is going to become a part of them and my point of telling you that story is even in that particular moment I don't know what his mother's situation was. I do know that it was bad enough for him to get taken away and for him to be put into foster care. And he had been there, I think, at that point for a couple of years. And I don't know that he was inherently like all the way racist because we had been in school for like a minute. And he had never called me an N-word before, nor like ever. Like I had never had any inclination that he was racist but i do know in that particular day something had to come out in him and i and i just remember as he was talking that day i knew that he was just a broken child and that he wanted to break somebody else because that's what broken people do because somebody once broke them. So I actually wanna go into a Bible verse and then we can kind of continue from there. So it's Ephesians 6, 4, and it says, fathers do not provoke your children, do not anger, do not exasperate them to the point of resentment with demands that are trivial or unreasonable or humiliating or abusive, nor by showing favoritism or indifference to any of them, but bring them up tenderly with loving and kindness and in instruction of the Lord. So I think sometimes, you know, even when it comes to parenting, we have to know that not paying our children attention, not being there, not showing indifference, not loving them, not showing them enough attention. Like even some people have the mentality like, oh, I pay for them. I pay for my child support. I don't necessarily have to be there. I don't necessarily have to hug my child. I don't necessarily have to tell them I love them. I don't necessarily have to show these emotional aspects, but you do. And the reason why I am saying this is because I am so, 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 so tired of seeing children, especially women, growing up with all of these freaking problems, looking for love in all the wrong places. I am so, so, so tired of these men growing up with all of these jacked up issues using and abusing and just want to use women for what's in the inside of their vagina because they're too afraid to properly get love because they have some deep-rooted emotional mom issues that they that they want to take out on the woman that they're supposed to be with we have to understand that a lot of these problems that we're seeing in this this increase of this hookup culture and not wanting to emotionally attach to anybody or being afraid to emotionally attach to anybody because a lot of this stuff where it's like it's starting to occur because the way our family unit is breaking down is starting to change and we really have to stop that and I think that there is absolutely no excuse for it and I'll tell somebody all day every day I definitely was not the type that grew up you know rich my mother had me at 19 years old she joined the military she got a master's degree as well as several other degrees on top of that she was the type of person that made a way before that my grandfather they grew up in the back was a freaking Alabama like 
freaking Alabama, like poor is a freaking joke. I mean, poor, like some of their like relatives didn't even have a inside bathroom. They didn't even have no bathroom. Like we would go in the backyard when we visited them and have to use the bathroom. This is legit. They even have an outhouse, okay? But at one point they was like, okay, no more. And even my grandfather, he was, he would, he would like, okay, you know what? I am going to be the man of the house. He would like read us like books. They would get encyclopedias to like teach us to learn. He would be the type of father that even he didn't have. And so we have to stop making excuses as to what we don't have, what we didn't grow up with, what we don't know how to do, and what we are angry about, and what situations happen to us as to why we cannot parent our children properly. And we have to stop creating all of these emotionally damaging children as to why we are perpetuating this cycle of adults and making it worse generation after generation where we cannot see these normal family units where where these normal family units that I feel that our generations are deserving of because I feel like there's a lot of adults that lack logic that lack common sense that lack resiliency that lack emotional development that lack the ability to give that are completely selfish that don't know what it's like to love that are not willing to put in the work that hate the opposite sex that hate you know that want to use and abuse women just for the sake that it's fun we have women that want to use and abuse men just for the sake that it's fun. All of this is dysfunction and all of this stems from childhood from some type of way from when they have a broken spirit from when they were humiliated dismissed or abused or something so if you have a child then you have an opportunity to change that and you have to reflect on how you're raising your child and if you are a deadbeat dad watching this then I highly suggest that you don't jump stupid in my comment section but you use that same effort to get on the phone and go call your child and make and, and make an appointment to go see them and get re-engaged back in your life because you coming for me is not going to change the fact that you're uninvolved or indifferent towards your child. I really think that we need to stop this whole, you know, nonsense where we're just bad parents and we are excusing. I am just so tired of seeing this nonsense. In it. We're not going to do it anymore. We need to have healthy parenting healthy boundaries, and healthy discipline, okay? Commit yourself to doing that, all right? All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys another day, another time. Bye, y'all.